first thing you've got to do is you've got to realize there's a problem, and the problem is in my mirror. 80% uh, of personal finance, 80% of building wealth is behavior. Only 20% of it's head knowledge. Most of us know what to do, but this guy I shave with every morning, he's got issues. You know, I know what to do. I know if I, you know, if I, if I eat everything in sight, I'm going to be huge. And, I, and if I don't exercise, I, so I've got to exercise more, eat less if I want to lose weight. Same thing's true with money. We know what to do. We just don't want to do it. We want to buy a bunch of stuff. And so you kind of got to get that fixed in your head and then start working your way through the baby steps. Baby step one is the easiest baby step because it's quickly get $1,000 cash in the bank. I want you real quick to get $1,000 cash in the bank. That's your starter beginner emergency fund. It's the hardest baby step because it's where you'll decide if you're actually going to do this stuff. But it's the easiest because it's a small amount of money. The second baby step is, is the toughest of all. That is the debt snowball. That's where you list all of your debts, smallest to largest, pay minimum payments on everything but the little one, and attack the little one with a vengeance. Stop all your savings, all your investing temporarily, and pour every dollar you can come up with focused intensity on that smallest debt. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you try to do six things at once with your money, you are not accomplishing anything. Be focused, laser-like on one thing and knock it out. And when that smallest debt is gone, take the money you used to pay there and attack the next debt down. And when that debt is gone, attack the next debt down. And every time you pay off one more, you've got, the snowball rolls over, it picks up more snow, you've got more money to attack the next debt down. And so by the time you get to your small, your largest debt, not counting your home, you're able to pay on that two, three thousand dollars a month in a lot of cases because that's the total of all your old payments. Average family doing the stuff we teach with this focused intensity, with the passion that we're talking about, with living like no one else so later they can live like no one else, beans and rice, rice and beans, Kraft mac and cheese. I mean, we're living on nothing for a short period of time to get rid of this debt because the borrower truly is slave of the lender. Average family's doing this in about 18 months. That means some are doing it faster, some are doing it slower, but that's the average. Once you've done that, you don't have any payments but a house payment. Wow, I can breathe now. Now I go back to my $1,000 account, I raise it up to three to six months of expenses. That is our fully funded grandma's rainy day fund. The Bible says in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil. There you go. You need to be wise. You need to have some stores. You need to have a rainy day fund. Why? It's going to rain and you better be ready. Now you got three to six months of savings set aside. You got no payments but a house payment. Now you can breathe. You're actually starting to get control of your most powerful wealth building tool, which is your income. Now you're starting to realize the borrower really is slave to the lender and I'm starting to feel freedom on the edge of this. Baby step four is put 15% of your income into retirement. Baby step five is start kids college savings. Six is pay off the house early. Seven, well there's nothing left to do then but become very wealthy and give a bunch of it away. Great steps. And uh, we, we know that you're going to be doing some teachings for us as well, and you'll get into more detail on that. And Now, your primary audience is uh, the United States. Our primary audience is Canada, but we do cross borders uh, both ways. Now, these principles you're talking about, those are, are trans-border, I'm sure, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Uh, God's ways of handling money, they work wherever you are. Uh, obviously, the mechanical application of how you do retirement in Canada would be different than how you do it in the U.S. But you're still saving for retirement. You're still saying in the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil. A diligent man prospers. You're still applying these basic concepts. You're still saying, gosh, I don't need to be in debt. Uh, regardless of what the form of debt looks like, it takes my ability to build wealth and give away. Now, Dave, you've quoted a number of scriptures already, and you're certainly not ashamed to credit much of your wisdom and principles to the bestseller of all time, the Bible. Uh, why is that so important to you? Well, no, number one, I'm a believer, and it's how I guide my life. And for me to give advice inconsistent, regardless of whether I'm doing mainstream radio or, or doing Christian television, to give advice inconsistent with who I am would be very hypocritical and watered down, and it's just not who I am. One of the benefits of going broke is I no longer care what you think, so I just do the right thing. And I don't mean that in a mean way, but we just go about doing this thing wherever we are, whether we're in a mainstream audience or whether we're in a Christian audience. The second reason is this, more important reason is, Again, personal finance is 80% behavior. If you're talking about modifying behavior, you've got to address the psychological, you've got to address the relational, and you've got to address the spiritual. To leave the spiritual out of the discussion of personal finance, whether you're a person of faith or not, is frankly really naive. Now, uh, Dave, a lot of people are, 
are caught up in, in fear. Economic fears continue to, to swirl around people's minds today. Uh, what advice or perhaps comfort can you give to someone who's feeling financially paralyzed by worries of market meltdowns and impending global recession? Well, there's two types of fear. There's, there's fear of something that you can't control and that's not real. Uh, you know, the monster in the closet when you're five years old and you're trying to go to sleep at night. Then there's the other kind of fear, and, and that's fear of something that's a reality, and that's the hot stove or the truck coming down the, the road towards you. you. You know, you've got to react to those kinds of fear. But fear is not a fruit of the spirit. So making financial decisions, whether the fear is based on reality or whether it's based on the monster in the closet, making your decisions based in fear will always, no exception, 100% of the time leads you to making poor decisions. People that buy and sell their investing based on emotions rather than the intellect and the act of their will are what we call children. Children do what feels good. Adults devise a plan and follow it. And that's being pretty mean. But I'll tell you what, there's times in my life I've been a little bit childish. And when I was childish, it cost me money every time because children are impulsive. Children act on the feeling of the day. And, and if that manages your money, you'll be broke your whole life. And so the truth is, is that economic climate has slowed down worldwide. That's a reality. Now, how does that really affect you? Not nearly as much as the news media seems to tell you. Uh, my friend Zig Ziglar says that 90% of the economy that affects you is between your ears. So making a decision on what you're going to do in your economy in this situation, that's how you've got to do it. And if you're watching the news every night and they're upsetting you and keeping you freaked out, hey, start watching sports. Or Christian television. There you go. <laughs> well, Dave, uh, we strategically chose January as a time to get to, together with you and to have this conversation and to offer your book. And we want every one of our viewers to request your book, The Total Money Makeover. And I know I'm asking you to toot your own horn here a little bit, but why should everyone get a copy of your book? Well, not because of the guy's picture that's on the front and not because of anything I've said. Because here's the deal. The reason we've gotten millions of people out of debt has very little to do with Dave Ramsey. Truthfully, it's not false humility. Truth is, when you start doing stuff in your life, including money, God's ways, it really works. A good friend of mine is an Orthodox ra Jewish rabbi, Rabbi Daniel Lappin. And he says, uh, try to go anywhere in the world and find a Jewish slum. There's not one. It's that simple. Why? Because that group of people have a tendency, culturally and religiously, spiritually speaking, to handle money God's ways. And it works. So that's why you ought to do it. You ought to learn how to handle money God's ways because, hey, I'm practical. It works.